Good morning, FlossTube. My name is Erica, and I am here to talk to you about my first finish in like months, cross stitch in general, a new project bag, and the visit I had with my family last week. So if you are new, welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I hope you stay and give it a chance and see if it's something that you might enjoy watching and subscribing to. Um, if you are returning, thank you so much. I really appreciate everyone who hangs out with me every Sunday morning and comments and interacts with me and is my friend. Um, you guys are the best community I've ever been a part of. And I'm so glad I started doing floss tube 30 weeks ago today. So if you're new, I will spend a couple minutes chatting about life stuff and general things at the beginning, but there'll be a timestamp in the description box below that you can fast forward to the stitching talk. Um, I feel like today's gonna be kind of a quick video. I don't really have that much to show. I've only worked on three things. Uh, my, there was a rocking chair here that I hadn't used in like two years, or at least a year since we moved here. Um, and there's the Christmas tree. I told you guys about a $39 Christmas tree that they have at Walmart and I have it so that I can put some of my um, cross stitch ornaments up and to kind of do like a farm theme a tree is my goal. Eventually this, this is all like, um, that's some of my cross stitch pattern, the one that I have printed and shipping supplies and I want it to be probably my fabric. So this might end up eventually getting moved over here because where I'm looking at right now is my sewing corner of the room. Um, but I'm gonna put the tree here and then probably take these two down. There's a Christmas wall quilt that I really wanna get done. It's not even like a quilt, it's a panel from Hobby Lobby. So all I have to do is make the quilt sandwich, do a little bit of quilting and then bind it and it can be hung. So it's super fast. Um, I'm not used to how bright it is because of the time change. Like this is almost blinding. I got my hair cut. You can't probably tell at all. I had like four inches cut off but because I mean my hair was that long. You can't really tell but it looks much healthier and I got my nails done. This is like the one time I'll ever have my nails done. I don't, I don't go and do that stuff very often. I just don't ever really have the time and I'd rather spend the money on cross stitch or gardening. So it doesn't happen. Um, so my parents left yesterday. My mom got here Halloween afternoon. My dad got here on Wednesday and then they drove home together, whatever yesterday was, Saturday, I guess. And my husband got home yesterday. So my kids are over the moon. They are so happy. They, all, they just love having family around because we don't have family ever where we're at because we're military so we're constantly moving so to have grandma and grandpa here for a week and then to, now to have dad home um and he doesn't really have to work much next week there's you know veterans day and i think they gave him a couple days off because he's been gone since august beginning of august i think he came home for like a week or two in october left a couple of days before my birthday and the stomach flu and the crew and being locked out of the house and all those fun things that happen when he's gone um so I feel like we didn't do too much when my parents were here because this is their maybe third time visiting since we moved here a year ago, just over a year ago. Um, so we've done a lot of the touristy things already. Like we've taken them to Garden of the Gods, um, taken them to Manitou Springs. They have this amazing antique arcade there that we really love going to. So this week, I mean last week, I guess we just really did like Chuck E. Cheese was maybe the only thing like out of the norm. Um, my dad's birthday was November 5th. And so we were kind of like, not celebrating his birthday at Chuck E. Cheese, obviously, but we did have a cake and we got, we were gonna go out to eat, but going out to eat with two kids is just not relaxing. So we got the food to go and we had a little birthday dinner here for him. So it was really nice. I'm glad that they got to come. Um, did not get the cross stitch for him finished for his birthday, obviously. If you guys remember, I'm working on a Cooler Design Studios fishing nostalgia one. And it, I don't, uh, I don't even think it's gonna be done for Christmas. Like that's, I'd have to mail it like a month away no unless I was working on it exclusively which I really don't want to so I'll just send it to him when I send it to him um I guess that's kind of it for life stuff like I said I feel like it's gonna be kind of a short video because I don't have too much to show I've been really just working on a couple of projects I, I have been working on my diamond painting uh, weeks ago I probably showed that it's like a fantasy dragon and girl one um, it's not a full drill it's a partial drill got off of Amazon for like 12 bucks. I just wanted to try it out. I really like it. I didn't touch it for weeks and then I picked it up yet two days ago maybe. Um, and now I'm like, I have one color left. So it will be done by next week. I say that and it might not be, but I, I hope that it will be done by next week. Um, I don't know if I'll do a whole lot more diamond paintings. I gotta see when this one's actually finished and like hung up somehow. I don't wanna, s I don't wanna 
to say anything negative about it because I know people really like it, but I just don't know if it's something that I really love. We'll see when it's actually finished and framed. Like right now, it's just a piece of sticky paper with beads on it, so. I guess I'll just get into stitchy stuff. Um, so we're at 5, 512. So the first thing that I have been working on are these um, Christmas ornaments. So this is, of course I have threads everywhere. It's Farmhouse Christmas um, series by Little House Needleworks. And it's one of nine. And I have seen people do them either all on one fabric or as ornaments and it looks beautiful both ways. I'm doing it as ornaments. And I'm waiting on um, some colors to show up. And I, that's kind of stopped me from being able to progress really on these two that I've, I've started. I ordered from Threads and Twined a week ago maybe. And she normally ships super fast, but she had evacuated for the fire. So I'm sure she's behind a little bit from that. But I did order from her. She had a sale and I ordered the classic color works that I needed. Um, for this and some beads from my other Christmas village that I'm still working on and something else. Oh, Jack Frost Tree Farm. So I've got those two. This one's called Grandpa's Truck, I believe, and this is the Little Red Barn. So all I've done is the two colors, white, um, I'm using DMC Blanc and red, Cherry Cobbler, I believe. Yep. Yeah. And that's most of it. I mean, like this one's almost done. I think I just need like a fence post and a, like a small tree on one side and then some little details on the sheep the white blobs down there oh and thank you guys so much like i asked last week on the tiny modernist castle i was like what is this gray blob in the pattern supposed to be and someone was like it's a mouse duh she didn't say it like that obviously but it obviously is a mouse once she said that um so i might chart or i might go ahead and do it now because it's really cute now that i know it's a mouse so i'm glad i asked Oh, there's something going on. I need to rip out, the, and I already ripped it out once, that this is not right. Like this is, there's one extra space right here. So I don't know if I just need to shorten it, probably. But then I already redid it once. Like I have no idea. Maybe I had too much wine the night that I stitched that, I don't know. I normally don't make too many mistakes, but it happened and now apparently I made a mistake again and I have to redo it again. Okay, so the next thing I've been working on a lot, so I've been feeling very Christmassy, is Jack Frost Tree Farm by Little House Needleworks as well. And I'm at, um, I guess I just really did the trees. I finished this Douglas fir uh, words and then the trees. And I need, there's some greenery up here um, and wagon wheel. So this color, that's the border. Uh, that I'm out of that so that's one of the things I ordered from threads and twined and I need to do it like the tree trunks and then a part of this tree on the roof um, and I, that's about it these this is going really really fast like the top one obviously was a lot more intensive and I still haven't even finished it because that's what I do I get bored of working on something and I move on to something else and I never finish it um, but this Douglas fir one like these smaller blocks you could easily do in a couple of days easily because it's just it's just not much. Um, so I wanna, I would like to finish this by Christmas um, and I probably will. Now whether or not I'm actually going to fully finish it, it's a 50-50 chance. I hate finishing. I wish that I had like a friend locally that was really good at it and I could just be like, please do this for me. And I don't even, I know I talked about it before and you guys were like, you don't have to do fancy finishing. And, and I agree, I don't even have to do anything crazy. But even just putting it in a frame is something that's going to take me like 10 times longer than it needs to because I don't feel confident in doing it and I just don't like doing it. Why finish when you can just cross stitch? Um, so my last project, oh my God, this is gonna be the shortest video I've ever done. I don't understand what's going on with my life. Uh, this is a finish, I have a finish, I'm so excited. Uh, well, I say that and then I, it's actually maybe not fully finished, I need your guys' opinion on something. So this is Prairie Schooler uh, Christmas Tree Farm. And now that I've finished this, I think I am going to start another project like I really like having a manageable amount of whips and for me that's like seven to eight and even then I only work on like three of them at a time like in a week I'll have like a downstairs project an upstairs project and then I kind of just if I'm bored I might fill out something else for the week um but there there's a prairie schooler fall pattern that I really like that I might start or cinnamon stars I don't know who did that one I don't know, so maybe Prairie Moon? I don't know. 
but I might start a fall pattern since it's fall. Uh, and then this one is done. And I did this on uh, four, oh, I'm so sorry. I think there's comments from last week I haven't gotten to yet. It was just kind of crazy with my parents here. Uh, but somebody asked me like what fabric I'm using. Oh man, I can't remember. I'll go back and answer the comment. Um, Cause I know I'm really bad about saying what fabric I'm, I'm using when I hold things up. So this is a 14 count opalescent fabric. And I did have somebody ask me if it was hard to stitch on, not at all. Not in the slightest. It is not tight. It's just like, for me, it's just like stitching on regular 14 count Ada. I don't know who the maker of this is. I got it at a local shop and I was going to go back and see if I could find that info. Um, I need to go and look for some fabric soon, so. It's finished! Oh my gosh, it looks so cute! And it's so big. Like, I always start these projects thinking like, oh, I could finish this in like a week or two. No, no, I, I can't, clearly. Um, I love it. I love everything about it. So, my question on whether or not, is that a needle in there? Yeah, there's, it's a needle right there. So I said it might not be fully finished. Um, there is white charted on this pattern, which clearly I did not do because I did it on white fabric. And it was a very small amount of white. I think it was like the windows, um, maybe the, in, the inside of this car. But I, I kind of was toying with the idea of Santa's face of filling that in. But now that I see it, I don't need to. I think it looks fine. So the only things I changed on this pattern, um, this, the moon had a, Spot, like one stitch missing. It almost looked like it was an eye and I didn't like that. Like I don't want my moons to have eyes. So I didn't do that. There's a, supposed to be a line under this tree and above the word tree farm. And I didn't do that because I thought it was distracting. I also used two strands to back stitch here uh, versus one strand of back stitch for like the fences and the trees. And it, it called for just one, but I liked it a little bit more pronounced, I guess. I feel like there was another thing I changed, but I guess not. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna probably go ahead and cut this fabric so I can see if I can fit. I know I can fit something else on this. It's just gonna be something small. Um, it's so, this fabric is so pretty. I really like it. So there's my tree farm. I love Prairie Schooler so much. Um, oh my gosh, it's always so much prettier when I hold it back. Look at that. I can't wait to start hanging up Christmas stuff. I almost busted that tree out and put it up, but I was like, no, I'm not gonna do it. Not that I have anything against putting the tree up because I know a lot of people already have. And part of it is just like, it takes so much work to put your Christmas decorations that you want to enjoy them. Or like from, I was talking about it last week, my family, our tradition was always that we would put stuff up Chris, or Thanksgiving night. And so as a kid, I loved it. We would have this big Thanksgiving meal and then that night we would start putting up Christmas decorations. That was our tradition. Well, for some families, their tradition is they have people over for Thanksgiving or they go somewhere and it's already decorated for Christmas and they love that and that's their tradition. So I don't care when you decorate, it makes you happy, go for it. For me, if I were to put that tree up now, I'll be sick of it by December 1st. Um, so I, I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna try to put it up after Thanksgiving. I'm looking at my watch like I even, it never tells me the date. I don't know what date it is. Maybe the 10th, if that sounds about right. Um, so it's two weeks away. I need to get working on our Thanksgiving menu too, because it's gonna be really interesting <laughs> cooking for a gluten-free vegetarian. My husband does not like anything fancy for food. He is a meat and potatoes, chicken and rice, burritos guy. Like he probably eats those three things. He actually never eats meat and potatoes, but he eats like the, a couple very, very basic meals and that's it. He doesn't like to try new foods. He doesn't like to try new restaurants. He doesn't like to try new cuisines. I still remember when we were dating and he started eating roasted vegetables because I would roast a bunch up like asparagus and Brussels sprouts, you know, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, stuff like that, and coconut oil. And his family, and we went there for Christmas for the first year we were dating, and he, they were like, are you, are you serious? He, he, yeah, he eats it, you got them to eat that? Like they were shocked. He grew up on like pizza and ice cream. He wouldn't eat anything else. Um, jumping I was like my, my husband's taking the kids to McDonald's for their daddy date is so cute my daughter woke up and she was like pancakes I was like yeah you get to go get pancakes today and she points she goes you 
And no, I said, I'm not gonna go, because one, I can't eat them because I can't eat gluten. I said, I gotta, I'm gonna stay home and work and ha came and hang out around the house. And she goes, aw. I said, but you get to go, it's a daddy day. And she got all excited. She goes, daddy day, daddy day. This is so cute. Um, I will say one other quick kid story. I knew I had more stuff I could talk about. I just, my mind went blank at the beginning. So my daughter knows some of her numbers, like we're working on her letter. She just turned two in September. And so she can't verbalize a lot of it, but she can like if she's got this huge wall of letters in her room, like you would see in a, like a school supply store where it's just like letters that they would put up around their classroom. And every day before nap time or bedtime, I'll be like, can you point to the M for monkey? And she can run over there and point. So she knows a couple of those, but we haven't really, enticed her to tell us if she knows anything about numbers yet like I, I count constantly that's how my son learned we just every time I give him food we count every time we're reading a book I'll say like oh how many butterflies do you see on this page and we count them um but the other day she asked for a banana and she calls them bedebedez <laughs> so she goes bedebede and I was like no you already had two and she goes three and I don't think, I don't know if she held it the right amount of numbers, but she said three. So I was like, oh, so you know how to count. And of course it's relating to food the first time you do it. Um, we actually had to hide the bedibidiz because she, we the way that our main floor is, it's like a big circle. Like I remember when we first moved into this house, we came from a 1400 square foot house. I really don't know how I didn't kill my husband living in it. Such a small house for three years with two kids. Um, but then we moved into this house and it was like a maze. So the main floor, like you walk in the door and then it's a huge living area and dining room area. And then you walk into the kitchen and then a family room and then the laundry room and then a hallway back to the main area. So we have gates up so that they can't go over. They can, they're in the living room and the dining room, but they don't go to the family room, which is where all their toys are. Like they really don't have toys in their rooms. That's just for sleeping and all the video, or video games board games, Play-Doh, arts and crafts, like all that stuff's in the family room. So it can get messy real fast if it's not under supervision. So there's a gate right there by the kitchen. And so she was sitting, she would stand at that gate last week and just sit there for all day she could. Because she sees the bananas on the counter. So we finally had to hide them because mommy was gonna go and stand up at her one more time. And when grandma's here, grandma gives into everything that little girl wants. So <laughs> she, oh my gosh, she is so drama and high maintenance and whiny and throws these fits and she'll sit there pout. And I'm just like, pout, I ain't gonna do nothing. Grandma would give in, I ain't gonna do nothing. So it's pretty funny. She gets very into her food, very into her food. Um, okay, so the last thing I was gonna show you guys today is a new bag. And I, I don't say this lightly because like I shouldn't have favorites. Like I don't have a favorite kid. I shouldn't have a favorite bag in my shop. I do. This is by far my favorite bag. I mean, for Halloween, probably there's a Halloween bag. For Christmas, I definitely really like the Grinch bag. It's very vibrant and colorful. I'm looking at all my fabrics now. But this, I saw this fabric when I was looking for other fabric. I had never seen this fabric before. I had to buy it immediately. I'm going to buy more because it's, I only have like enough to make one more bag as is. Oh my God. First of all, y'all know me and gardening and farming, anything relating to that. So my husband knows we're getting chickens. We're getting chickens. We're getting Angora rabbits. I was looking at alpacas. I spent an hour of my life this week researching keeping alpacas in your backyard. It looks like... I could have a, a horse here, but as far as other livestock, it has to be under a hundred pounds if it's not a horse or something else. And I'm like, that doesn't, that's not fair. Alpacas get to like 150. I'm like, there's dogs that are 150. I should be able to have an alpaca in my backyard. Look at this. Look at, it's so beautiful. The color, I mean, look, the colors are so vibrant, so rich. The detail is amazing. I, oh my God, I love it. And it feels like silk. It's so soft. It's such a high quality fabric. Oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. So if you like the bag, there's a link to my shop in um, the description. Oh my gosh. I love it. I'm so obsessed with it. I'm so obsessed with it. I want to think of something else to do with this fabric too. There actually was some panels that came out with it uh, to make a table runner. So I might do that. There you go. So that's all I have for you guys today. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I've just been working really hard on those three projects. I really wanted to finish and I got my finish. Um, 
and the diamond painting I did for like a day when I normally would cross it for about an hour to two hours I just did the diamond painting so that took up some of my stitchy time so today the high is 66 which is very weird for November in Colorado I think I'm um, gonna take the fishing out or the fishing out oh my god take the kids out fishing my four-year-old really likes to fish he's really good he's great at casting actually not so great at waiting to reel it back in so but he likes it so whatever he's having fun he can go out there and cast for an hour straight uh, and then tomorrow it's supposed to be 30 degrees and snowing so we're gonna go out and enjoy the day today um not sure what we're gonna be doing next week but my husband does have a couple days off and so maybe try to go on a hike again i would really like there's a place here called seven seven bridges and if you hike the full thing it's you cross over seven bridges well we tried it once before and we knew we weren't going to get the whole thing done but we got to the second bridge which was maybe a mile and turned around i really liked that hike i thought it was very pretty very easy for the kids but, you know it's fun stuff to see like oh a bridge like it's so exciting when you're a kid and you're walking around the forest um so i might try to see if he wants to go do that again because it's also close um we next weekend have a very 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 big surprise plan for the kids they have no idea what it is and so my floss tube will be i guess it's the same day because we're going to go do that sunday afternoon so maybe i'll we'll talk about it next week um it's just a fun surprise for the kids and kind of a like celebrating that dad's back and it's local and i didn't realize it was local and then i did and i was like oh my god we got to go do this immediately so Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. I am going to start working on our Thanksgiving menus. Like I mentioned, it's going to be kind of interesting. I might try to do a gluten-free apple pie because um, that's everyone's favorite pie. We might do macaroni and cheese as our main meal. Um, my husband just doesn't like turkey. You know, for the last couple of years, I don't. I guess I did it last year too. I would always buy a small turkey because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Thanksgiving. You have to have a turkey. But he doesn't like it. And the leftovers, he'll eat some of it, and the rest of them will go bad. My kids won't touch the turkey. So I might just do a um, homemade jalapeno mac and cheese for my husband and I, and then regular mac and cheese for the kids. And definitely do some mashed potatoes and gravy. Oops, sorry. Um, biscuits, apple pie, lots of veggies. My kids love green beans and corn. I would make green bean casserole, but I don't know if they would eat it like that. Like they just like it very plain, which whatever, as long as they eat it. So, well, I'm going to go and relax for five minutes before my husband and kids get back and we have to get going for the day. But thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will see you next Sunday.